We're glad to have such a large, wonderful crowd here. Um, tonight we are here to see photographer Marco Anelli, whose book Portraits in the Presence of Marina Abramovich is extremely beautiful for every one of you who have the book and every one of you who haven't gotten it yet. Um, grab someone's next to you and take a look through it while they're talking perhaps. Um, he took these photos during The Artist is Present, which, was, which took place at MoMA in 2010 during the retrospective of Marina Abramovich's work. Um, tonight, Marina and Marco are going to discuss a lot of different things, I'm sure. Um, it's going to be totally up to them. And then after that, we're going to have a short question and answer time, and then a signing um, down on that side afterwards. So please join me in welcoming Marina Abramovich and Marco Anelli. Right. Good evening, everybody. I saw so many familiar faces here. I've been looking some of these eyes already. And thank you for coming. So I am here in the functional moderator. And I would like to introduce you David Baliano, who is an artist and who you know, also my assistant till the last day of the, of the MoMA show. And then he left me forever. <laughs> and now he's going to help Marco. He's, Marco is going to give his introduction in Italian. And David, we are so happy that he will translate in Italian, from Italian to English. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about Marco, how we met. It was uh, some years ago, my ex-husband uh, was saying to me that I definitely have to meet this young photographer and we definitely have to make my portrait. And somehow I was constantly, you know, the, the postponing, 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 and finally I was in Rome and uh, I met Marco on exhibition and I said to him, he want to make my portrait, and I said I have ten, 10 minutes and that's it. You know, I didn't trust him and, you know, too good looking and Italian and <laughs> so, 10 minutes. And uh, we made the appointment and he had to come to the house where I was staying. And uh, he arrived with his assistant and with enormous equipment. And I said, oh my God, it's not going to be 10 minutes. So I asked him, what you like to do? Wh what kind of portrait, what I should do? And he said to me, I'm not interested in your face at all. This becomes, I get really interesting. I get me really going. I said, what you interesting about my face? And it's my portrait. He said, your portrait for me is your scars, all in your body. That's your portrait. So I like to make this, the portrait of your scars. And this was such a good idea. I was so jealous that I didn't get this idea first. <laughs> so I said, oh my God, it's a really good, good, good thing. So we start with the scars. And he had this huge camera who is like a really, what's the name of this camera, Marco? Yeah, Hasselblad. OK, Hasselblad is good advertising, Hasselblad. But it's really to take like a huge lens that you can take really close up the, the look. So we start with my stomach, which I had a five point star scar. Then we start with my neck, then with my hands. I mean, I have plenty of scars. So we actually work all day. And, uh, and there came these amazing images. It was like a landscape, it looked like a out of moon. Uh, it looked like the real scars become actually the really por real portrait of me. And this was our first collaboration. And uh, it was such a great chemistry. It really worked it's from the right from the beginning. Then we really start talking about possibility if we can make more works together. And uh, he sometimes, uh, so we actually organize our deal that sometimes he, I have the ideas and he make works for my editions. And sometimes he have ideas and he then, I, you know, I work for him and he do different things. And then it's his photography. So when it came the project, Artist is Present, uh, I told him what I'm going to do. And Marcus said, okay, what if I, film, if what I, if I photograph every, every single person sitting there? And when he came with this idea, it was really, I felt like almost, you know, in my stomach, like a cramp. I said, oh my God, that's another great idea. But then, I have to tell you, before that, before Marco, in performance art, we're talking about 70s. There was never anybody who make actually 
I could photograph performance with some kind of a specific idea. You know, f different. Uh, let's say I would just give you the, the example of Joseph Boyce. I, you know, Joseph Boyce will be make the performance, and he will have like a 10 or 15 photographer around making photographs. He never give any kind of specific instructions, never kind of idea what photograph should be taken. And then after the after the the, the performance was finished, the photographer will give him the, the different photographs, and he will say no, 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 and then he will take one or two photographs who can possibly be his work. And this was always so random, and no, no, nobody ever in the 70s gave specific information how the documentation should be done. Much later we learned to do this, but not in the beginning. So, uh, and also, we, there is never really close relation to photographer to be somewhere, be at the present, constantly in that time. So if the performance was maybe one hour, two hours, photographer will come, you know, he would take photographs, maybe something happened on the left, and he will miss completely what's happening on the right. Then he will go out, smoke the cigarette, come back, you maybe, you know, then we'll f f photograph a little bit more here and there, but will never be really serious documentation in any possible way. So when Marco asked me uh, th that let's do this project in Artists is Present, it was his idea. And he wanted to do every single portrait. Which means that in history of performance art, there is no one photographer ever who spent entire time of three months being there in the entire time with me. That means that he can't go to pee because he missed somebody. He can't go to eat, he, he, you know, he missed somebody. He, he, basically, he was in the same condition as me. I was sitting there and he was photographing. Every single person coming on and on. We are talking 1,765 people which is a lot, and three months of his life. So that's a huge sacrifice, and this is a very unique example. I don't know any example in, in, in art scene. I only know example of Te Ching, who made one-year performances, which he took portrait of himself, but there was no any other person present to take photographs of him, because nobody invests that kind of amount of time. So this is why this book is such an incredibly unique, uh, uh, unique actually, um, uh, document. And I really like the Marco going the introduction to talk about the process, how he take the care of the photos, what was his important thing for him, and so on. But also for me, it's, it's something you know. I have to talk about something that I'm extremely disturbed, and you have to share with me. You know, uh, and this is really concerning my work. You know, Marco is really made something incredibly valuable and contribution to, to this to this work. But I'm coming here to the Strand and I see this uh, this uh, advertising and in this advertising is huge my name and then is Mark Connelly. By the way, Klaus Bizon is not here because he's somewhere else. I don't know. He could not be here. He apologized. But then I hate that. I, I mean, I, I don't like because I always have this problem also, you know, helping young artists, being with, with, with people. I, I they really have the, something to say because I'm always overshadow, but it's not that I want to overshadow, it's that always it's about commerce and it's always about selling the products who overshadow. And I want to distinguish that, that I am not you know, part of this. In the same way, I don't want you to sign the book tonight because to me it's not right. This book is made by Marco Nelly. He has to sign the book because he's author of this book. And if anybody, you know, in, in a different mood, a different situation or whatever, you know, I, he, somebody wants my signature, I can give my signature to anybody, but I don't think this book is his property. So this is why to, to be respected, and this is why I need to say that. Okay, this is my uh, my how you call introduction. Thank you. So now uh, I would like to give a word to Marco and to talk about his motivations, and then we will open to discussion. Hello. Uh, thank you. Hello. Thank you, Marina. Uh, thank you to everybody. I beg your pardon because my English in so is not so good. So I will talk with um, in Italian, and my friend David will uh, translate for us. Sorry for that. Um, quando, prima di tutto, vorrei ringraziare Marina per la sua disponibilità a, a questo progetto. Uh, è molto raro per un, per un fotografo trovare un artista che dia una così grande disponibilità e uh, libertà al fotografo è, una, una, è raro e molto altruistico per lei 
So I would like to thank uh, Marina first to... Um, uh, it is, yeah? You hear me? <coughs> so Marco would like to thank first Marina for uh, giving him the chance to uh, make this uh, project happening. And um, he would like to, uh, to underline how it's rare to find um, an artist that is uh, ready and um, and wanting to share so much of the work with the, with the, with the photographer. Allora, questo è uno dei progetti più importanti che io ho fatto a livello fotografico e lo è per vari motivi. Uno di questi motivi è il fatto che <coughs> um, fare un lavoro sull'artista più importante, performance più importante nel mondo significava per me partecipare attivamente in qualche modo a questa performance. Well, uh, Marco considered that this is the one of the most important work that uh, he did in uh, his practice and uh, his research so far and he approached it knowing that uh, it's going to be a challenge because he understand from he understood from the beginning that um, he will have uh, somehow to challenge himself and be practically part of the of the performance almost. Questo significava quindi per me realizzare, per questo motivo io ho scelto di realizzare tutti quanti i ritratti delle persone che eh, si sedevano di fronte a Marina e, ed era il modo migliore per rappresentare emozionalmente ciò che stava succedendo durante quella performance. So the challenge uh, that uh, Marco proposed to Marina and what he was interested in, uh, in doing was to uh, take a portrait of each single uh, participant uh, in the performance and he thought that this was the only way to sort of um, portrait the entire uh, experience uh, from a sort of um, emotional point of view. Allora, per questo motivo ho realizzato 80.000 scatti fotografie in totale cercando di rappresentare al meglio ogni singolo incontro che Marina aveva. Eh, ogni sera sceglievo la foto migliore, la foto che a mio giudizio rappresentava al meglio questa performance in base alle espressioni del volto. The full body of work is over uh, 80,000 uh, shot and um, while Marina and uh, well and me partially well uh, home and, and rest Marco will do uh, daily the post production and uh, daily will choose the the image to to report mainly on a base of which image seemed more uh, more emotional I just want to interrupt here and say that when I finish my sitting I go home and rest and he continue to work <laughs> Ma, no, ma era anche la parte più interessante, una delle parti più interessanti del lavoro perché potevo vedere effettivamente la parte concretamente il risultato finale di quello che era la rappresentazione del, degli incontri che ci hanno stati di Marina. Well, the, the part after the, the, the shooting session, let's say, for Mark has been very important because somehow will allow him to, to look more carefully to each shot and to each uh, participant. So for him has been very, uh, very important to the, to the production of the entire uh, work. Ma sì, è vero. Comunque è stato difficile all'inizio seguire, stare lì costantemente tutto il tempo e seguire la performance. Ma poi dopo un po', dopo aver preso il ritmo, ogni volta c'era una situazione diversa e questo ha fatto sì che il progetto era giorno per giorno più interessante anche se sono stato tre mesi là potevo restare altri, altro tempo a continuare a fare fotografie perché ogni volta c'era una situazione diversa ed era impossibile prevedere che tipo di reazioni le persone avevano nella, nella, negli incontri con Marina It's been very, very difficult, a very uh, challenging experience, but uh, Marco found it more difficult uh, on the beginning, and uh, he said that it could have gone longer than, uh, than three months, also because um, more the longer the performance went on, more was uh, unpredictable what will happen during the day, so every day there will be something new and different uh, happening. Comunque era sempre una situazione particolarmente privilegiata perché io potevo assistere attraverso l'obiettivo a quella che era una conversazione intima che avveniva fra Marina e eh, la persona che in quel momento era di fronte a lei e questo era particolarmente interessante generalmente i primi 5-10 minuti dell'inizio dall'inizio 
eh, le persone erano tese e il ritratto non era molto interessante era interessante lo era dopo 10-15 minuti quando le persone entravano nella performance e questo si poteva leggere attraverso il volto attraverso le espressioni del volto um, Marco says that he had a very uh, privileged point of view from the rest of the audience because the, the lens and his specific point of view allow him uh, to, uh, to get more in details and um, he said that uh, people will be more nervous in the first five minutes of the performance and then we'll get more into it so um, uh, the most interesting things will happen after 10 minutes more or less ok il, mo il momento più importante era quando <coughs> era quando il, um, la persona aveva uno stato emotivo così forte che spesso piangeva e vedersi eh, formare la lacrima nell'occhio e scendere sulla guancia era quella eh, l'immagine più forte e più intensa che io potevo realizzare e era anche il momento più emozionante per me perché comunque assistevo in quel momento a un momento particolarmente intimo e intenso. The most emotional moment will be when um, somebody will uh, start to cry and um, from his point of view Marco was able to um, to look and uh, and record the, the the beginning and so the first the first teardrop and on the entire experience he considered that the most uh, the most emotional uh, point. Personalmente dal punto di vista, questo progetto ha un import è importante per me sia dal punto di vista artistico come rappresentazione emozionale di quello che è avvenuto durante la performance di Marina, ma anche dal punto di vista fotografico perché mi ha dato l'opportunità di realizzare un progetto fotografico sul ritratto che prima eh, non avevo ancora mai realizzato. It's been a very uh, unique and important experience uh, personally, but uh, as well as uh, professionally because it um, uh, gave him the chance of make something that uh, photographically has never uh, been done before. E probabilmente è importante proprio perché questo progetto, questa performance è stata fatta a New York, che è la città unica al mondo più importante. Dove, no, dove è possibile trovare così tante diverse categorie di persone, razze, personaggi. The uniqueness of uh, the work has been also made possible by his location. So the fact that this happened in New York, uh, I think that made him much more important because it's um, a rather unique situation uh, and a unique place where you can have so many ethnic uh, group represented in one place. E niente, concludendo, sono contento di essere riuscito a finire questo progetto nei migliori dei modi e di essere stato parte, di aver partecipato a quella che è una, forse uno degli eventi più emozionanti e storici del, dell'arte. Eh, soprattutto verso la fine si, si assisteva a situazioni particolarmente... Eh, strane, io ho fotografato delle persone che correvano all'interno di un museo e questa è, un, è una situazione particolarmente strana da vedere. He is very happy of um, being able to participate uh, and contribute to a moment of art that uh, is probably going to remain in, uh, uh, in history and um, as well to assist to something that has been rather unique in, the, in what is a museum environment, so like taking picture of somebody running into a museum or sleeping in front of a museum is something that doesn't happen in so many other, other shows. Yes. Okay, se qualcuno vuole fare delle domande, io e Marina siamo. Questions? They are both ready. Yeah, um, this question would be for both of you. If, um, <coughs> if you remember some of the more uh, memorable moments for each if you could like describe what they were like according to the thumbnails in the book like according like based on the timeline of the people like that you remember as more like emotional moments just for each other or whatever god i will be so unjust to, i have so many memories that's just incredible but I, I just wanted to point one because it was so strange and different uh, actually um 
it was the Tibetan woman who came with a little child and the child was covered, you know, she had a little capuzon. And uh, she looked at me and I looked at each other and it was, it was something so painful, as so many times was painful, but this was extremely painful. And then during this, uh, this performance, uh, and you know, we look at each other, she very slowly took the, the capuzon of this baby and uh, I just saw that the baby had this huge scarf. It was probably operation or whatever. I never figured out what it was. But the sharing that moment was so incredibly strong. It was nothing to do with anymore with performance, being in the museum. It was something on very deep human level. Really touched me incredibly. But it's just one. It's so many others, you know. But that's just pop out of me from my head right now. Yes, uh, also for me, there are so many there are not uh, one portrait in particular, one situation in particular, there are many. It's true, uh, what happened between Marina and the visitor was uh, like a, such kind of conversation. As uh, usually, there are some conversation is uh, more, for me, eh, is more interesting, some less interesting. But in a way, is, uh, on uh, 1,545 portraits, it's difficult for me to say. <laughs> if there are something in particular. Okay, I have another one. This man right there, <laughs> look at him. <laughs> he, you've been like my guardian angel. You came so many times. You touched my heart so many times. I mean, just, you know, and you're there here again, you know, I, your family, that's... And <laughs> Okay, Paco is the, <laughs> it's family too, but I, I mean, I just look at you right here now. <laughs> We're talking about now. <laughs> That's a very good question. I'm asking the same question to Marco. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I really, it's a good question. Uh, this is uh, the most diff one of the most difficult part, also because uh, for the big selection, uh, I would expect the sequence, uh, the number. So it was very difficult. I try to put in the big selection uh, you represent in the big selection all different kind of people, all different kind of emotion. For this reason, they're um, not all. For me, I wanted to put everybody in the same size, but the publisher was not uh, agree with me. Uh, so, uh, also because the, the, the book was huge, so. <laughs> But can we can we talk about future that we one day we really get rich and we make everybody the same size because that will be my choice too. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's I think is the most difficult decision that I think that for me every single person there have the same value. I agree, I agree, totally agree, totally. <coughs> So my, my dress is, it was very simple. I, uh, you know, in this sitting in the hall and starting in the March is so much wind and so much cold. And when you sit long time, your blood temperature would go very, very much down. So even more colder. So I actually um, went and buy the really heavy wool <laughs> and the, in three colors, which was really important for each month. And uh, I start with the blue dress. And this blue dress was really to calm me down and start the performance, you know, from that aspect. So then in the middle of the second month, I was in so much pain, physically was so difficult, that I need red and I need something to give me energy. And in the third month, when I removed the table, then it was all about purity and enlightenment and whatever, then I need the white. And uh, I didn't want to use any fashion. I, in my, I like fashion in, in my life, but I don't like in art. So in art, it was just a simple gown, almost monastic looking straight down and can protect me in the same time from from cold and 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 to be simple that you know that looks like sculpture idea was really to look like sculpture so with the one down there all the way you um you mentioned how strange it was to see people running in a museum and sleeping outside of the museum um i'm wondering if 
either of you anticipated it being such a craze and um, people travel to get there, and how you felt about people making it so much about themselves and how much the individual became a part of the piece. I don't know, it's grow up day by day, Marina, do you remember? Day by day, it's every day is uh, the people, I talk often with the people during the day. And uh, I remember at the beginning the people come in front of the museum at um, 9, then before 8, 6, 7, always before. And uh, in the hand, they slept outside in the MoMA. But then uh, after a line, uh, at the moment they open, uh, the museum is open, they run to try to get um, the position first. I would, I, every day, yes, because grow up, yes, yes. Not so much, but uh, before, not when the, before the performance, but during, I expect it is a success. So I can say for my side that uh, when I t give the concept to the curator, Klaus Biesenbach, he said to me, but you have to be sure that, and also to expect that maybe nobody will sit in this chair in front of you. What are you going to do? I say, I sit anyway, I don't care. So nobody expect that, no, especially not the museum, that they, they could not believe. I mean, we are, we are in America, nobody have time here <laughs> for anything. So, uh, but at the same time, didn't happen immediately, because the first months, everybody was busy since Barbara Walters was talking about the nakedness and the, and the top floor. Everybody was busy with sixth floor, and if they have erection, they don't have erection, they have half erection, you know, the people in the door. I was just so banal and so incredibly low, you know, there was all, there was all about, you know, speculation and uh, nakedness, which is a big problem in this country anyway. And then and then the, the second months, they start noticing, oh, I'm still sitting there. And this is the third month when everything gets up. So this is the really important, the long durational work of art have to really be long durational, because the, not just the person who is, who is doing this have to go through certain transformation, but the public have to go the same. And we both need time. This is why net need the time that this happened. And that was all. Because it's you and then you and then you. Uh, my question actually is from Marco. I'm Marco. How did you decide on the camera angle to take the comment? Si, 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 so critical. I, uh, first of all, I tried a um, position more far. Uh, to not uh, condition it, uh, the performance. So for this, for this reason, I use uh, the big telephoto, 600 millimeter. And then I try an angle more, um, uh, almost uh, frontal, but I have a marina in front of me. It's uh, just behind of marina. Because I, don't, I didn't want the profile, I wanted the frontal in the person. Marco, David doesn't know work because you speak English now. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We have the lady, this lady. Yeah. I really wanted to ask what you learned at the time. What you learned from the time. Okay, okay, that's absolutely. It seems to have been in your regular amounts. Um, slow and speed up. You mean the Is time during the performance or the time after? No, the time in the... the but that's a, through the experience. That's a very important, because my reflection on this performance is uh, above all about, uh, also, about the time. <coughs> because, uh, first of all, the line, the people in the line, the line is very strange, because uh, the people didn't know if they managed to sit from Marina, because if uh, the person before him, see desire to stay all the time, they cannot um, manage to sit. It is because there is no rule, uh, there is no limit of time. But it was uh, so interesting because uh, the people in the line, waiting in the line, um, uh, regularly, it is very strange that it is um, it's true, the time in the atrium goes low. It's very interesting that this happened in a city like New York where 
the time goes so fast, so quickly. It was so interesting. Also, the people that sat in front of Marina, I talked with many of that people, they told me that they lose the sensation of time. Me, also me, when I sit in front of Marina, I sit just for um, one minute and uh, 69 seconds. Uh, when I finish, I have had uh, the impression to stay 10, 15 minutes. And uh, that's it. So uh, what I can say about the time is that uh, you, you measure the time if you talk about past, you think about time. If you talk about the future, you think about the time. But where we are really in the present, time don't exist. There's no time. If I will just wait till the seven hours is over, this will be the worst torture ever. I completely lose myself in the presence here and now. And then time is not there. So time is just not there. And that's what is a huge discovery for me. So, wait, somebody there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm always looking this side. There's always this side. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Everyone looks very waxy and kind of hooded. And I was wondering how you achieved that with the lighting and the camera angle and why you chose to shoot them that way. Interesting question. <coughs> Aspetta, questa, questa in, in, in italiano. <laughs> Sorry. And, uh, questo era um, possibile per le luci che erano state scelte nell'atrio. Uh, le luci erano, eliminavano tutte le ombre. E dal punto di vista fotografico questo aspetto era ottimo perché io non volevo nessun uh, altro elemento che potesse condizionare il ritratto. Volevo il viso puro, senza ombre, così com'era. This is mainly caused by the, the lighting, which was uh, thought in order to uh, sort of erase any, any shadow from the, from the faces. And that's because Marco wanted to have the most neutral uh, portrait uh, possible. So to not have like uh, shadows that will interfere with the, um, with the expression. I also like to say something that also about the entire staging, because you know the space is enormous and how you, you have to define that space. So we decide to have these four lights who actually use for the uh, shooting the movies, street shooting the movies. They're quite ugly, they're really absolutely as they are, you know, with all cables and nothing aesthetic but there is a kind of aesthetic of the, of the street aesthetic and that four lights actually create a zone of light and also erased all the shadows it's really important so that create that kind of space when you enter you enter into the zone it was one thing so what is now now she you think that <laughs> Excuse me. What? What she said? Do you think that narcissism can be a feminist tool? Uh, do you see me as a narcissist? Because it's always about me. <laughs> yes. And that's a very important question to clarify. It. You know, first I'm not feminist, and I really hate to be feminist. Never been, uh, because I don't like to be in any categories. I am female, but I am not female. I'm female, but I'm not female artist. I'm just artist, and art doesn't have categories. You can only have a good art or bad art, and that's it. And there's nothing in between. But the thing about narcissism, you know, uh, I think is is a very important question because I think that uh, this performance is putting your ego completely away from yourself. To be narcissism is to have ego big as a mountain, as a, as a Himalaya. The first thing I come here, I'm complaining that my name is too big on this door, and Marco Nelly little. And maybe could be little proof that I'm really not into narcissism. I, my, my body and my, uh, my, my work, it's my tool to combine something else. And you have to see behind that. And I just use, I'm, you know, use the, the body. And it just happens with my body. That's all. And I don't see me as a feminist or as a narcissist. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.
Що ти про це? No, no, any, any, no, I, at the beginning I have afraid because I am not a performer, artist, so I knew it could be difficult. I just chose to have a, not a social life in these uh, three months because uh, <laughs> that in New York is very difficult um, because uh, I work on the, the picture, on the, the photo. I arrived with Marina at the museum, I left with Marina, and then I worked on the pitch until uh, midnight, uh, one o'clock. Um, Uh, so for me, for three months, uh, three months, I chose to have any 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 social life for this reason. At the beginning, as I told, uh, it's very it's very difficult. Uh, but then uh, you get in uh, also the energy, the incredible energy of the performance uh, was uh, so strong that uh, in the, um, it was uh, no a problem for me. I just like to say that we call each other three musketeers, basically, <laughs> because three of us. It was like in, it was like a military t training camp. I mean, every morning, uh, the David will come in the morning, you know, in the eight o'clock, and then we go to the car, and then we pick up Marco, and then we all go to the museum, and then I have to do all the routines, like I go the last time to the bathroom, you know, the dress, the dress, the on the he prepare the camera, then we all day in the museum, then we go back, we you know, we put him in the into his place, then we go to my place. It was like every day the same three months there was no connection to outside world and it was the only way to do that it's complete isolation Ciao. for Davide and Michael and Marina could you maybe describe when that came to an end what you did for yourselves because I'm imagining that was very bittersweet it was beautiful maybe you're happy to finish but doing the same thing in the repetition what did you do to maybe comfort yourselves or to move on and go back to your lives we parted for a week in a countryside that was sweet swim in the river that's what we <laughs> and uh, i don't drink but the kids made cocktails <laughs> <laughs> That's a big question. I want to, Marco, I, I have to Marco to answer first, please. The reason why I asked you Okay, just I need about five minutes. I was thinking, I incubated this project for a while and I wanted to do it. 
do and when I came to New York, I'm not from here, and when I came to New York, I came to the bookstore last week and I picked up the book and it's just like beautiful. Thank you. Hello. Di Marina, si è già anche piacere, ma anche lui. E quella riguarda me? I think this will really should be the last question because I have a very long answer. But we wait for him first. Because this summarizes everything. Ok. Um, Era difficile eh, capire che tipo di persone, che tipo di reazione le persone potessero avere. Anche dopo 1000-1500 ritratti era sempre un'incognita, era uno anche degli aspetti più interessanti di questo progetto. Io ho sempre lavorato dal punto di vista fotograficamente istintivamente, quindi mi sono sempre lasciato guidare dall'istinto, quindi non c'è una regola in particolare. Io selezionavo l'immagine che secondo me rappresentava più eh, intensamente quell'incontro e in alcuni casi poteva significare anche che non c'erano lacrime o semplicemente una bocca aperta o qualche altro particolare ma non c'è una regola in particolare ogni volta era una situazione di diversa e ogni volta era una sorpresa There is no, no rule to make that, uh, that distinction. You said that uh, even after a thousand of, uh, of, uh, of photos, um, he very much rely on his uh, instinct and, um, and on his capacity to understand the, the, the expression of the, of the subject. But uh, even at, at the end of the project, it was very difficult to, to predict how a person will react. So it would be very difficult to make that distinction, and that, uh, especially if somebody gets so emotional to the point of, uh, of tears. Okay, so it's going to be kind of a little longer. All right. I, after the, perf the artist's present performance, um, maybe six months later, I got this phone call from uh, Los Angeles, and uh, is the friend of mine. He said, "You have to talk to this guy," and he picked me the telephone, and I said, "Who are you?" And he said, "I'm a science fiction writer, and my name is Kim Stanley Robinson, and uh, I would like to have lunch with you." And Kim Stanley Robinson, I just Google immediately, and he's really great science fiction writer. He made the trilogy of Mars, and he's kind of also some works been also making the movies and so on. And uh, I say, okay, let's have lunch. So I go to Los Angeles and I make appointment to him with lunch. And for during this lunch, he gave me this book and just published. And the book is called 2312. And, he, and it's dedicated to me and I say, so nice. But you say, but it's not just the book I wrote. You're also one of the main characters in the book. And I say, what I'm doing in your book is a, is a 2312. And, and he said to me, oh, it's very simple. You, you are on the name Abramovich, and you are doing the performances in asteroid in Mercury, <laughs> in the un anti-gravitation space. And I say, oh, but this is so amazing, but why me? He said, oh, but you are so, your work is so immaterial. It's so perfect for galactic trips. <laughs> so, so then I took this book with 900 pages, and there I am, really Abramovich, and I'm redoing re my performances in Asteroid. Okay, so this is one part of the story. So now we go to the another part of the story. And they're all very painful performances, by the way. So now go to the other part of the story. I go to Brazil, and I was just last February in Brazil, and I visit some shamans, and I saw this very strange uh, the sh you know, shaman woman who looks uh, into you kind of, uh, it's like clairvoyant, and she have all the little stories stones on the table, and in the middle, middle, very strange stones. As I work with stones, I know them all, but in the middle, I didn't recognize. I said, what are these stones? I said, oh, they're just meteorites. I said, okay. So he, she said so many precise things about me, but the one, the most important thing she said, and she never met me, she never know who I am, what I'm doing, is absolutely middle of nowhere. So she, said, she said to me, oh, you know, uh, you are not from this planet, and you, and you never feel home anywhere. 
And this is so true. I, I even if I was born in ex-Yugoslavia, I don't felt Yugoslav. I, I always felt stranger. I, I live in Germany, I don't feel German. I live 30 years in Holland and don't live Holland. I'm now 12 years here, I don't feel American. I always feel like I'm displaced everywhere, like a real black sheep. And she said to me, oh, but this is, you know, you are actually, because your DNA is a solar, from another solar galaxy, so you're not from here. And I said, okay, I didn't know I'm an alien, that's an interesting thing. But then she said another thing that really makes sense to me, you know, talking about asteroids, performances, and so on. She said to me, but you are sent to this planet with a very specific purpose. And then I asked her, but what's my purpose? And she said, you are, trans you are sent to this planet to learn the humans how to transcend pain and that makes lots of sense to me okay that's it my answer <laughs>